For my educational theorists, I pick both John Locke and Aristotle. Um, I'm going to begin with John Locke. John Locke believed that basically a child's mind was a blank slate, and when we're born, we are neither born with being inherently good or inherently evil. Um, he also believed that a child's personality developed based on their childhood environment. And during this time, um, educationalists believed that the adult had a very large influence on the child's life and on the personality that they would end up having as they got older. <clears throat> um, they also believed that during this stage where the child is finding their personality, they're highly impressionable, and that's where the importance of the adults in their lives comes into play. Uh, John Locke also believed that uh, an ideal education would instill um, strong moral virtues and moral values, and he believed that that was very, very important, and that a child should be taught mostly virtues uh, wisdom, breeding, and learning. So he was a very strong believer in the child being highly influenced by other things during its during a certain period of time, and he believed that it was our job as educators to make sure they were influenced in the correct way. Uh, my second theorist was Aristotle, and he, um, from what I read, he was very big into like emotions, but he was also big into creating what it was quoted, um, the creation of a sound mind in a sound body was his definition of education. That's what he believed that education truly was. Uh, by saying this, his idea, his main aim for education was basically the benefit of the individuals so that they could find happiness later. So they would learn all the skills that they need in order to be successful and be happy later on in their lives. He also believed that our thinking and practices must be infused with, you know, a clear philosophy of life. So basically, we should have a clear idea of what we want in our lives and our thinking and the way that we practice what we believe should benefit our life later on down the road. And it was our job as educators to make sure that we guide our students in the correct way in order to be successful later. He also placed a strong emphasis on a round or balanced education. So he believed that uh, sciences and you know physical education and arts and stuff like that, we should all be equally as knowledgeable in all areas instead of just science or just uh, math or just art or anything like that. He believed that it was very important that we know a balance, or we all have a balanced idea of what that really is and just be well-rounded in our knowledge so that we can apply that later if the situation should come up. That way we're not um, lost in that subject. Uh, he also looked at education through both reason and habit, which, me which means that he believed we learn by doing, and, you know, if you put the reason into action, it'll become a habit. So that's what he believed was a very important technique that educators should use, and, I mean, it seems pretty, in my opinion, it seems pretty logical about it, just based off of um, being a more hands-on student. I learn more by doing. And I know a lot of other people like that. But then there's also other people that learn by reading or learning by research. So he believed that in order to make something a habit, you had to practice it and work through that. And those are my two educational theorists that I chose to study.